because this won't take too long. So, Tom 2, I'll just cut the attacks out. You delete everything other than just the, you know, the transients, whatever. And then see, I'm sure people are going to go, well, oh, there's, I know there's plugins that do this, but I want to see it done with my own eyes. And I think when plugins do them, they change the velocity of the attacks. Just, just other things start happening that I'm not sure what's going on. So I want to have full control of what's happening. You know, you can have everything else deleted, right? You can just take this and you consolidate or whatever, and then you drop it down to a MIDI channel and it's percussive. And it's so it created two big MIDI notes, one at the beginning, it didn't even get it at the right time, but this one landed, change duration. Let's just make that, yeah, smaller. Okay. So yeah, see that didn't even land where it's supposed to go, but it got that one. So if I did it this way, boom, okay. It's just getting right where I want it. And if you can look at the velocity, well, let's make that way bigger. Yeah. So my velocities match what the, the performance was. And that's what I'm trying to get. I do not like all the velocities close together, unless it's that kind of project, right? I want my kick drum not to be, you know, 127 velocity. I want my kick drum to have, to simulate the sound of, two feet popping off and then that downbeat is harder hitting or whatever. And then I even like it whenever a long double bass run, I like it whenever you can hear the feet kind of get tired and then the velocity starts going down. I kind of preserve all that. I try to preserve all that as much as possible. So that was my way, my current way of getting that. So then I take those MIDI notes and I drop them on an instrument channel, those two Tom hits right there. And there they are. And that and for the instrument i'm using there would be superior drummer three that'll be the death of darkness you can see i had i pulled up some preset and then i always mess with my presets and then tweak them to how i like them you can see a little asterisk there that means i edited this beyond just remove stuff if you remove all the um, items you're not using like there's nothing there like you just right click and then just go to more and then remove instrument you're gonna see your whatever your cache up here just gets smaller and smaller. So it's, it's less taxing on your system. I'm not, I don't need all this other stuff. So I just need the toms. Well, usually I match the tuning of the head of the tom to the real one that was tracked. I remember actually that this sample was too like long. If you see the decay and you can hear it, it's this really brutal like bleh sub that goes on for basically too long um, and I think I remember kind of cutting it out and re-triggering it because I liked the rest of the sound so I think I probably did something like that and then it's still really long yeah and then I just went through and sorted that all out by pasting this one in. She looks a little bit out. Oh no, that's cool. So I'm just getting one. Because that compared to that, or well, especially this one. It's a big difference actually. Yeah. And you need it to be kind of tight. Don't want it flapping around now, do we? In the interest of like being able to hear the change, I'm going to have to trigger it up. Do you know what I mean? I can't yeah. I can't just go, oh okay, that's that's probably what I want it to look like. Let's move on. I kind of need to like get that set because it's the foundation of the, you know, yeah. it's the bass drum. So the easiest way to do that for me is going to be like this. I'm just going to duplicate the sample track. I'm going to need to cons I'm just going to pull that one down. That was the one I edited. Going to pull put them consolidate them all together so because I had loads of gaps in. They were all yeah, individual. I've got fades all over them and stuff. So that makes it look neater. For now, I'm assuming they're all in phase because I don't know, I just am. So then I'm going to cut that and I'm just literally going to go through and bang. Has he done like a dynamic kind of thing? A little bit, yeah. So you can see some of them are softer and they probably sound better. Yeah, so you hear that? 
So you've got velocity sensitive stuff. So what I'm going to do is just mindlessly trigger the whole song real quick because this won't take too long. Take a minute or two and then I'll go back and um, so I'm just correcting the length of that and just to check that it's cool I'm gonna comfortable with that just because I know that that flappy extra bit will just not be good in the long run and it's really probably to be consistent and it's something that wasn't heard on the speakers on you know they don't even know it's there so it's kind of my job to sort that out that's what I'm doing so I'm just mindlessly tabbing Zzz. so I always like to see how long I can hold it before before I lose the coordination <laughs> um, but it's going quite well and I'm able to sort of multitask as well and talk to you guys there we go I lost it sorry I mean, I'm not going to start putting it in triggering engines and risking phase. I'm, I'm just going to correct the, the sample itself. And then there's one more boring thing I've got to do now because I've just re, you know, I've basically shortened the bass drums as we talked about. But there's dynamic ones. So I'm just going to go through and pull them down to retain the, uh, the dynamics there. Uh, okay, so you basically created you, uh, a new track. Um based off of what you thought was the perfect hit and now um you you laid the entire track and then in order to not have it sound like a robot you are still pasting down and keeping the more than the softer dynamic hits yeah and i know in the long run it will be worth it yeah uh, because it's already been considered and you don't want to like shit on what's already been done you know what i mean yeah or especially in a case like it. this if on with a band of this level and a production of this level, the dynamics aren't there by accident. No, this has clearly um, been done to the last detail. Um, but also more, more that um, the groove itself is going to sound better. I mean, he's going, do, 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 ka, do, 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 you know, all the little kicks that Matt Nichols is playing. I just can't. I have to take care of that, you know, because. And I actually enjoy doing that because it's what makes it sound right. And there's not a huge amount of them, so there we go. That's pretty much that. Just in case I made a mistake, I'll probably just hide and make an active the original thing. And I can pull it up at any point. I'll probably crossfade them as well, because why not? Um, that should sound better. Do you have any sort of preference with the type of crossfade that you would use for this? Uh, no, I just don't really think about it. I just put it about three milliseconds and then just, I just do it. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't sit and listen to the difference, and I've just been doing it so long that I, it's going to be fine. Whatever, really. All I'm doing is you, you don't even need to do it. I don't think in this case. I think I don't think it would be popping or clicking or anything. It's more just like a almost habitual thing. So that is boring, but we've done it now. So there we go. I've basically shortened the kick drum sample and. Um, I might just make a new playlist of that and then just oh, duplicate the playlist rather and then just kind of bosh it like that so it looks cool and do that again from there. I'm happy with that. Are they in phase? Well, given the nature of the session, yes, they probably are. And we can see that they sort of are. Although that loud one looks like it's a little bit early, doesn't it? Not the soft one. Do you think I can get away with sliding the whole thing? Let's find out. It seems like they're all pretty much off by the same yeah, so amount. That, that would make me feel a little bit better about life. And then the way I dragged them down, it might be a problem, but I'm just going to, you know, the dynamic hits that I dragged yes. down, sounds, it seems like they are now out based on my big slide, but you probably won't hear it. Um, you're still getting the same effect. Yeah. Because don't forget, it's, you know, I don't know, I'm guessing somewhere in the region of maybe 10 or 15 hits in the entire song, and they're sort of softer anyway, so I'm sure we'll be fine. And I tend to use the bass drum um, in the mix, the live one, and typically I would have one sample, perhaps two, depends on how things go. Ooh, look at this guy. She's on her own. 
It's not good. Sorry, mate. So that's that. Let's start with kick drum and open up an instance of trigger on this on this mic track. All right, so rather than load up a sample, I'm gonna turn the mix all the way down and turn on the gate function. And that'll kinda um, let us audition what our settings are doing up here. So first thing I wanna do is uh, uh, set up our input volume. Since we're looking for an, an accurate representation of his actual dynamics, uh, which honestly looked like he was just crushing it the entire time, like a badass drummer should. But I'm still gonna wanna zoom out, find some of the hardest hits, like maybe these few right here. Yeah, when he's just crushing the beginning of that beat. Let's set up a loop there, and, uh, and we're gonna adjust the input volume of trigger to, to represent along the hardest hits, somewhere up near the top on those, so everything else would fall underneath, and we're not clipping anything on our uh, clipping off any of our uh, dynamics. Okay, so now those are reading uh, at, at the top of our little dynamics window here, and then everything else would fall underneath, so we know we're getting all that information. Pretty important step that is often skipped over. Um, if you don't do that, you'll you'll end up having you know um, your dynamics for all your MIDI tracks will just be at 100 all the time or uh, 128, uh, and you won't re you'll lose a lot of information that you could use later. So uh, let's pull off of loop and uh, kind of let's look around and see if maybe there are any sections that we would have to adjust uh, for softer hits. It doesn't look like it. This guy is just. Solid. That's uh, working for me. Uh, next step is to go to settings uh, and make sure MIDI out is enabled. Uh, another thing I'll, I'll point out for this point, you should be in normal latency mode. It's going to be your most accurate uh, triggering method. These other ones are, are for using during tracking or in a live situation. So you'll, you'll lower your latency, but uh, reduce the accuracy of the plugin in general. So make sure you're on normal mode. Uh, MIDI out. We're just going to leave this at C1. I'm going to track all the drums out at C1, and then we'll uh, put them where they need to go later. So let's grab all these and select no output. Did that drag across properly? Yes, it did. And then one by one, we will pick uh, the, the output of the kick instance for the input of this MIDI channel. And we also need to set these up on a drum map for each. So I'm gonna turn on click and drums, which is just a custom drum map that I use for, you guessed it, click and drums. Set left and right markers around uh, the drums you're looking to convert. Uh, record is already enabled. Save uh, and hit record. This is a real-time process. So you just let it ride through, go get a coffee, uh, take a lunch break, depending on how much you're working on. Um, and then we will also cut this video here and snap back magically like a cooking show and pull these perfectly baked MIDI tracks out of the oven. And we're back with our beautiful baked MIDI tracks. Did I burn out that joke? Did I burn that joke? That's a cooking pun. Uh, okay, so this is what we have. We just let this play all the way through. So we have uh, our drums on separate tracks. You know, we can pop open our yield kick here and see, you can see on this double bass uh, blast, this split foot blast that we're still getting data. He's hitting a little softer with his left foot, which is fine. That's what it sounds like. Um, if we decide to layer a sample in with his kick drum, it's going to mimic his actual playing and, and retain uh, that original feel, which is, which is always the goal. You can always push this further if you don't like the fact that those are a tiny bit unbalanced, but um, can't take it, can't get back there if you don't capture that data to begin with. So, uh, 